Resources Minister Madeleine King addressed the Australian's Bush Summit in Perth today, where she talked up the strength of our mining sector. She also said many Australians in urban areas have lost sight of where our economic prosperity comes from. I caught up with her a little earlier and started by asking her how we can change this. Well, I guess it's, it's about talking about it a bit more. And, you know, people are busy. Like, I don't, I don't expect uh, everyone in urban areas to, you know, over their bowl of wheat bix uh, have to uh, research what's going on in the... In the uh, regions of, of this place. But, you know, I think it's, it's good to have an understanding of where uh, energy uh, and our, our natu national prosperity comes from. So that's just about explaining it better, uh, you know, and that's uh, my responsibility uh, and that of the governments to, to talk more about our regions uh, so more people can understand uh, the basis of the national prosperity and the, the amazing stories that are out there as well right across uh, regional and rural Australia. Yeah, can you just explain the significance of Northern Australia and the economic outlook it produces to our economy? Sure. Well, well Northern Australia, you know, it's a big area across the three... Uh Two states, so Western Australia and Queensland and Northern Territory, are right in the middle. It has an enormous uh, potential for development, whether it's from uh, increased agricultural practices, but also we know it has the vast bulk of the resources reserves of this country. And as the global demand for critical minerals and rare earth elements just goes through the roof, there's an extraordinary opportunity for Northern Australia to make the most of that. Uh, so with those kind of projects, brings a lot of jobs, and that's really important, whether it's uh, jobs uh, in construction, but also the ongoing operation of, of uh, mining operations, and then later the rehabilitation of these projects. So th there's a big opportunity in the north, and there's always been opportunity in the north. The big challenge is making it happen. Yeah, on jobs, last week workers at some of Australia's largest LNG facilities in WA uh, threatened strike action which pushed up gas prices in Europe. Does the action like this damage Australia's reputation as a place to do business? Yeah. Look, there's, there's not many people that uh, work as hard as those people that work uh, in, in the offshore oil and gas sector. Uh, and the members of those unions, the AWU and others, you know, know, know full well how important their role is uh, to our nation's prosperity, to the supplies of gas in Western Australia, but also the supplies of gas to our region. But equally, there's, I certainly haven't done it, and I don't know many people that, that have, is uh, four weeks on an oil rig uh, out in the middle of the ocean is, is a pretty... That's hard work, you know. It's, it's remote, uh, you're away from family uh, and it's, it can be dangerous. Uh, and whilst these facilities are, are all managed really safely, like, it's challenging work and I think it's really important that uh, the unions uh, and the operators of these facilities sit down together and talk and I know there are going to be further meetings and I hope that all ends constructively. You launched the new critical mineral strategy a few months ago. How can you make it attractive for companies to build critical minerals infrastructure here when they can get much better subsidies in America, which has the Inflation Reduction Act? The Inflation Reduction Act is a really important uh, public policy initiative by President Biden, uh, and there is no doubt it's important to the whole world, quite frankly, and its decarbonisation efforts. But what the rest of the world doesn't have, and Australia does have, is a unique geology. Uh, we have uh, the greatest uh, supplies of lithium. We have one of the highest uh, reserves known of cobalt, and many others as well. The rare earth elements that are on our shores uh, are a really important part of this story. So uh, that is our natural advantage and has been for well, forever, and, and it's millions of years of geology have made it so. Uh, it's up to us now to work with our friends in America, the government uh, and private investment, to bring that investment uh, onshore to Australia so that we can make sure those supply chains are secure for Australia and Australians, but also for our partners in the US. Yeah, just on that advantage, over the weekend, Rio Tinto, it struck a deal to build a 600-kilometre railway line in the African country of Guinea, uh, linking the Simindu iron ore deposit to the coast. How much of a threat is this Simindu iron ore project to Australia's iron ore mines in the Pilbara? Yeah. Yeah, the the Simindu project is really important to international uh, iron ore supplies, but equally we know the iron ore industry of the Pilbara in Western Australia has been going for decades now. It is the most efficient uh, mining operation on the face of this planet uh, and it will continue to be the most reliable supplier of iron ore uh, into China and into other countries as well. So whilst... Uh, 
the other projects that are important. What we do know is that this country and this state and the Pilbara holds the vast majority of iron ore reserves in the world and an industry built over decades of hard work by everyday workers but also great leaps in technology and development and an extraordinary operation at the port of Port Hedland mean that iron ore will continue to be a really important part of Australia's export future. And a few days ago, you made the decision to abandon plans to build the Kimber low-level nuclear waste facility in South Australia. So is Woomera now the likely place to store low-level nuclear waste? Yeah. Look, we, we, I'm, my department is looking into options. We need to be very thoughtful about this. The reason uh, we had to... Or I decided not to appeal the federal court decision was because there was a failure in process of the former government. There was apprehended bias demonstrated uh, in the site selection uh, of Kimber. And I know this decision has disappointed and will continue to disappoint many people that live in that area. I also know uh, it is a relief for many others that weren't supportive. It is really important, because this waste lasts for so long uh, and, and is, you know, a really important... Uh, dangerous material to deal with, we really need to get it right. Uh, and if, it is my view, if uh, we had appealed or pursued uh, the site selection process as the current government had, we would be into further delays of multiple years. And that gets us nowhere other than more hours in court. And I think we need to go back, look at our options uh, and, and drive this into the future. Because this government is totally committed to making sure there is a low level radioactive waste facility for the nation. And just finally, Minister, today at the Bush Summit, you've also urged the private sector to get behind the Yes campaign uh, for The Voice. Just why is it important for business to back The Voice here? Well, to be honest, here in Western Australia, the resources sector is backing The Voice because they know that listening to Indigenous peoples is important. It makes things happen better. It delivers value for money. It, it delivers good projects and good outcomes for industry, for workers, but more importantly, for First Nations people themselves. So I think what we all can learn around this country as we can take a, a leaf out of some of the, that work uh, and, and listen to Indigenous people. We have, uh, there is nothing to lose here and only everything to gain by listening to Australia's First Nations people through a voice to Parliament.